All right, what's up, guys? Welcome to the tutorial. Today we're going to be building the Facebook-like navigation. So as you can see here, button clicks to slide over. Okay, you can pan, uh, you know, by clicking, and you have a view controller over here with a table view that you'll be able to add things to and whatnot. Uh, so there's going to be three parts. Number one, functionality. Part number two is going to be this table view. Part number three is going to be styling, drop shadows, and whatnot. So let's get started. Make a new project. I called mine Facebook Nav. We're going to have an empty storyboard. Go ahead, drag a view on top. All right, I'm going to name this one Bottom Layer. And I'm going to name this one Top Layer. Alright, for the bottom layer, uh, I'm going to give it a group table view type background just for contrast. For the top layer, I'm going to give it that scroll view texture background for contrast. Okay, let's bring up our little split view here so we can access this top layer. I'm just going to call it top layer. Okay and come down here we're going to need a pan gesture recognizer that's what's going to control most of this make sure you put that right on top of the top layer okay it should be one touch over here uh... you know if you want that if you want it to be a two touch pan make that two etc uh... go ahead and switch to the implementation file and we're going to control click from the gesture now to here and we're going to call this uh, pan layer. All right, so this is where our layers that our layer is going to be moved. This is a UI pan gesture recognizer. Call it pan. Cool. Now another property we are going to need is a position property. We're going to do that with a float. So we'll do that property. Not atomic. CG float. And we're going to go, uh, just say layer position. If I could spell here. You know what? Xcode preferences. There you go. That's better. Okay. I guess I didn't like that, huh? Okay, so we're going to call layer position. And we're going to come over here. And we are going to synthesize this. Equals under. All right. If you've never done this, equals under bar. Don't worry about it. It's good practice. You should do it. Uh, but I'm not going to go into it now. Okay. So for view did load, what we're going to do is set that layer position to be equal to the starting position of the top layer and you do that with the frame property and we're going to be looking at that x coordinate okay now on the pan we're going to say if pan dot state is equal to ui gesture recognizer changed in other words if this pan is happening do this okay the other one we're going to need if pan dot state is equal to UI just to recognize your state ended. In other words, if you lift your finger, do this. Okay? So for this one, uh, we're going to need a new CG point to be equal to pan translation in view self dot top layer. Okay? Because that's the view we're looking at. Alright, now we're going to set. Um, we're going to make a new frame, so we need C, uh, excuse me, CG rect frame is equal to self dot top layer dot frame. Okay, then we're going to set frame dot origin dot x to be equal to its current position, so self dot layer position plus Point X. Okay, so when you start a pan, it always starts at X coordinate of zero, regardless of where you're actually 
touching the screen. So you have to set the current position plus however much you're panning. Does that make sense? Now we're going to set self dot top layer dot frame to be equal to this frame. All right. Uh, now one thing I want to check. I want to say if frame dot origin dot x is less than zero. I'm going to set it to zero because I don't want you panning past the screen. All right. Now you're probably saying, well, do you need that for the other end? And the reason is no. No, the answer is no, and I'll show you why in a second. Okay, so we're going to say if uh, self dot top layer dot origin, whoops, frame dot origin dot x is less than or equal to 160. In other words, okay, so if it has not reached the end of the, or if it has not reached the midway point and you let go, I want it to snap back to the beginning. So I'm going to create a new method here, or we're going to call method animate layer to point, and we're going to pass in zero. So that obviously doesn't exist yet, but we'll get there. We we'll do the same thing here, self animate layer to point and I'm gonna say view hidden okay so let's define that view hidden and I'm gonna make it 260 which I have found to be a pretty good number so in other words it's gonna stop right at the 260th pixel uh, and it works that seems to work pretty well. Let's go ahead and define this animation. Anime layer to point. We're going to take in a CG float. I'm going to call it X. And we're going to say UI view. We're going to pick this last one. And let's go ahead and organize this stuff. Okay, so at a time interval, I'm going to say it takes 0.3 seconds, delay, I don't want any delay, animation options, UI, view, animation, ease out, in other words, it's going to ease at the end of the transition, forget that word out, it's a stupid name, I don't know why they do it. Okay, this is going to be our animation block, and I'm actually just going to copy some stuff down here. Okay, so again, we're going to make that frame. Although this time, we're going to set the frame of the origin to the point that we want to animate to. So it just has to be X. We're going to say self dot top layer dot frame equals frame. And when that's done, so in other words, if it has finished, I need to set my layer position to be equal to self dot uh, top layer dot view dot frame dot origin dot x cool so if everything is as I think it should be let's give this a run okay so we have this blank view here notice how it slides it snaps back because of that 260 point. If I let go here, it slides back. If I let go past here, it'll slide over there. Notice I can't go over here. Alright, so that's basic functionality. That concludes part one. Next we're going to go over putting a table view over in here, maybe some, uh, I don't know, some buttons, whatever. We'll figure it out. Thanks for watching that part. Please watch the next part and if you liked it, I would really appreciate if you look at my apps in the App Store. First one is Swipe Light, super easy flashlight app. It's all swiping, no buttons. I think it's kind of cool. And the next one is Magnifying Glass, which I'll have a link for. It's kind of cool. It uses the camera view and the techniques that you saw in this video to help old people read text better in restaurants, I guess. I don't know. All right, stay tuned for part two.